it sounds okay, but it's not even close to probably the best recorded reverb sound ever. It needs some work. So I don't know about you, but ever since I heard Jeff Buckley's version of Hallelujah, I've been just mesmerized by that tone. I'm not talking about the obvious, uh, the Telecaster through a Fender amp. I mean, yeah, I'll take that any day. No, 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 there's more to it than that. I'm talking about that reverb. And today I'm showing you how everyone can get that tone on any budget. That gorgeous, lushy reverb that is so prominent but never drowns out the guitar and distracts from the piece as a whole. But you can still hear every bit of nuance coming through in his playing. Something that's easily lost when you're a bit too ambitious dialing in that reverb. So, how do we do it? Let's get to it. So I played this song a bunch of times uh, on this channel, countless of cover gigs and also in the teaching room, it was a good one. What I always did is just grab any reverb. Um, this was on my board at the time. Such a great pedal, by the way, especially like the modulate setting and just dial up the mix and the level or the length, you know, and you can do that on any plugin, pedal, amp, modeler, whatever. And that was my sound. still sounds so good, right? But I never really got that sound. So I decided to do some research and I found that they probably use a 19 inch effects rack called the Alasis Quadraverb, a stereo effect unit that they used a lot in music studios in the 90s. So it isn't really a guitar pedal of some sorts, but this video is not about specific gear and the gear they used. The gear I'm using in this video is pretty much interchangeable. You can use any reverb pedal you want. It's gonna be how they used it. So I was pretty excited when I stumbled on a video by Mix with the Masters. It's linked below if you wanna check it out by a legendary mix engineer, Andy Wallace, who mixed that very record. And he talked about something that I've been dying to check out. So let's get to it. So what we do, we start out with three different reverbs. A short reverb. a medium reverb and a long reverb and this is a classic mixing trick I actually use whenever I mix a song. I use three reverbs or more, but I start out with three, a short one, a medium one, and a long one. Uh, the short one I used to make sure every instrument is playing in the same room basically or space because remember that's what reverb does we create a certain space a big hall a small room or a cathedral even the medium-sized hall or room i use to create more body to the instrument and the long reverbs i use for ambience or you know effect purposes more really with reverb we cannot only simulate space but also bring instrument closer or further away to us more lows and highs is closer And if we remove those highs and lows, so mostly middle, it sounds further away. Further, we can use pre-delay to create distance. It's like the delay between when the note is played and the actual reverb or the reflections coming back to your ears. For example, with this, no pre-delay. And now let's increase the pre-delay. So I love this because there's a sort of breathing going on between when you play and then whoop. So I've been using these techniques in mixing forever, blending reverbs, playing around with longs, with short, with medium, distance, EQs, whatever. But why did I never really try that on just a guitar? So let's see if we can get somewhat close to the Buckley sound using that very technique, mixing 
two reverbs, in this case a medium and a long one. And that's why I've got two reverb pedals lined up that I've been checking out lately. So let's start with the Empress and I'm using a medium hall delay. It's way too wet, so dialing back the mix. And it's too long, so the decay needs to be shorter. Better. I love to scoop out some of the lows because it usually conflicts when you're playing chords like this. It gets in the way of the chord. Usually the less low, the clearer it will sound. So let's dial back, maybe a little bit of high. This is the modulation and I'm hearing a lot of modulation in the Buckley version. So let's keep it at noon. These are the early reflections, I believe. sounds nice. Let's turn it off and go back to the... This was the preset I made already. Again, I scooped some of the lows off. The treble is pretty low because there's a lot of high end in the hi-fi mode. Clean. The reverb. All right, so now put the two and two together. Here's the Empress reverb by itself. And now we add the Chase Bliss. Okay, so it sounds pretty cool, but we're not there yet because there's one massive difference between mine and Buckley's. And if you listen to this on a smartphone, it may not be that obvious. So maybe it's time to put on some headphones or earbuds or whatever. Because mine is in mono and Buckley's is definitely on stereo. And that's a big part of why it sounds so mega. So the reverb is really surrounding you. We find ourselves in the middle of these cascading reverbs coming down at us. And the guitar is still beautiful centered in front of us and that's why it sounds so awesome. So I'm very lucky right now because I'm running my effects in the uh, FX loop of the Kemper amp and that can run in stereo. And I'm even luckier because these pedals can run in stereo too. But if you don't have this option, I'm showing you an alternative later. So keep on hanging. So right now I'm engaging the stereo loop on the Kemper. One sec, let me do that for you. There we go, stereo. <sighs> Probably dial back some with travel still. bass, keep some of the beef. From this point you can just, you know, dial in your own taste, but the technique is super cool and I love this. So what a big difference it is. One sounds really flat and dull compared to the one that really opens up, the stereo one. It's crazy. So before we go to the alternative, let's see how close we got. This is the original. I think it's pretty okay considering that Buckley's guitar is also mixed and mastered quite severely. I mean, his guitar just sounds, just, it sounds so flippin' good. It's not, it's crazy. Now let's say you don't have a stereo FX loop or you don't have t two pedals, which I can imagine and I'm super lucky I've got the option. But there's another way. And I think that way actually comes closer to the way they did it on the record. So let's go check it out. So what you want to do is record your guitar dry into your DAW of choice. Mine is Ableton Live, uh, but you can do it in any DAW you like. So here's my clean tone. And this case is coming off of the hook Little Lenny 2 that I've been testing out for a bit. And it has a gorgeous reverb, but let's turn it off just for the sake of this video. Whew. 
Ooh, that's dry. I'm addicted to reverb. So now we've got just one audio track and I'm going to record the guitar mono on that very audio track. All right, and there we are. This is my recorded track. And this is... Oh, it's so good. Anyway, here's mine. Okay, so what we're going to do, we create two return tracks, effects track, bus track, uh, different programs, different names, it's all the same thing. What it basically is, you take a bit of your signal and you send it to that track. And on that track, you can add effects like reverb, delays, chorus, and it'll just add a little bit to the overall sound we're hearing. So now it's completely dry. And here I've got two effects track, two reverbs. So on the one, I've got a medium reverb. So let's just send a little bit to it. You see, now we're starting to hear the reverb. Minus 10 dB to that very track. Sounds great already, right? I've got another reverb and I'm using the Valhalla Vintage Verb. It's a pretty cheap plugin, but it sounds mega. It's awesome. So um, you can just send another one to the long verb. Let's just isolate just a long one. longer. Let's combine them. So both, let's say, minus 7 dB. And how does this compare to Buckley's version? Buckley. Buckley's is more further away, so he's a little bit more like washed out in the back, minus too high. So let's just remove some of the highs from the guitar. So I'm adding a low pass filter and just scoop it like, I don't know, let's see. Okay, so this sounds pretty great already, right? But it's not as mega. Jeff Buckley's is just... And I feel like there's more separation between left and right. Let's have the medium reverb all the way to the left speaker. And let's have the long reverb to the right speaker. And you can just take that FX track or that bus or that send track and pen it hard right and hard left. So here is just the medium reverb. See, that's just one reverb. Here's just a long reverb. And you hear it's only coming out of your right speaker. And now let's add the guitar back in the mix and see how much it does. Mine. I mean, it's the same idea. It doesn't sound the same. You can't copy a sound that easy, but it sounds pretty flippin' amazing. I just want to try something else. Let's just create one more return track or FX track, a reverb on it. Very short, 1.3 seconds. I got, okay, let's just keep it. And let's see how it sounds if we keep that in the middle. So the short delay exactly in the middle, right where the guitar is creating a sort of atmosphere. To the left speaker or your left, we've got that medium reverb, two and a half seconds, two seconds, just creating that beefy sound. And on the right speaker, we've got that beautiful, lushy reverb going all over the place. Let's see how it sounds. Let's first start with the short in the middle. Let's add the medium. So one more time, let's compare the final version. Three effects sense. And here's Buckley. C and an A minor. These aren't copyrighted. So here's a question for you. 
At the 22nd mark of this video, I played you a version, Jeff Buckley playing Hallelujah. Or so I made you believe. What we actually listened to was the version we've just created in Ableton Live. So when you heard that being played at the beginning of this video, did you think we listened to the original? Or did you caught that? Please let me know in the comment section and let's continue. So I actually do believe that this is closer to the way they did it on the Grace record. Anyway, it also shares some resemblance with the video I made a while back on how I mix and record acoustic guitar that takes things even one step further. So if you're not done, feel free to check that out too. It's a lot of fun. So what I'd love to know from you is what are your experience using reverbs? What are some of your ways uh, to dial in the perfect sound. What do you like? What don't you like? Could be interesting to see for everyone. Stock reverb plugins, cheap reverb pedals. I got this one for 50 bucks, I think, like ages ago. It sounds really, really good. But don't let the gear hold you back. It's all about the techniques and creativity, as you saw in this video. Anyway, have a lovely day. See you next time. Cheers.